Are you ready to perform at your highest potential? Welcome to the Performance Matters podcast from GP Strategies, your talent transformation partner. In each episode, we'll interview industry experts and explore best practices and innovative insights to help your organization improve performance. The second thing that uh, we we introduced earlier is the fact that um, you believe your team believes that technical skills can be taught and developed, right? It's not something you're just born with. Even among those kind of like myself who traditionally has come from a non-technical background. And you know what? I, traditionally, when I've talked to people just in passing, not in like detailed surveys or anything, what I've usually found is people tend to bucket themselves, right? It's like people are in one of two camps. They're people that go, oh, I'm a technical person. I've got a knack for that. Or, you know, the rest of us who maybe went to a liberal arts school and we're like, yeah, I can't really, you know, make that shift. I'm just not wired that way. So my question to you, though, is, you know, can we really train people to move from non-technical work into the skill trades? Well, we can. We can train people to do that, to move from that non-technical world to a technical world. I think first and foremost is that those individuals themselves have to have at least some type of a desire to do so. You know, if there's okay. not an, uh, if there's not an initial, you know, um, interest or, 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 you know, to say again, desire to try to do it, it's going to be putting a, a square peg in a round hole all day long, right? So you have to you have to take the individuals that want to, and they are out there. Um, and I think you okay. see that across many industries that there are people applying for jobs in technical um, industries, um, whether it be automotive or power gen or manufacturing, whatever, um, because they're looking for some consistency in their work. They're looking for um, uh, a challenging um, and a sustainable job. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that you find more of that, right? So in, in, today's, in today's world, to satisfy the, the business needs of, of, of bringing those people in, we, we have to show them the, those potential employees a roadmap, right? We have to say, okay. okay, how do we do that? Give them a roadmap and show them that it is achievable. Um, and then we develop them into what we would classify as technical, provide them that career and growth, you know, that growth potential within in an organization within in an in, in industry, right? Um, it does. It starts with you know the basic safety. It starts with then understanding the the compliance aspects of of certain jobs, the human performance skills that are common to industrial environments. Um, you know, if you can get someone from a non-technical background to come in and be able to understand, work safe, um, and understand what they're there to do and the roles that they are and build it for them in a digestible way, it engages them, it builds their confidence along with their skills, right? Um, and the companies out there, I mean, it's, it, it really does focus a lot on the companies, again, to say, hey, are we providing, you know, you gotta you gotta provide what they need to assess, to build, uh, deliver the fundamentals that are needed, and onto the more advanced skills. We're suited to to support that for organizations, but the organizations have to understand that that's what they need, right? Training those people in practical application, developing that growth mindset, right? Developing assessments that they can use to follow up, and then teaching those softer skills to really build on the the individual, the employee's, uh, you know, uh, development over the longer term. Okay. So let me ask you this. Let me double back on one thing here, like specifically when it comes to uh, the the blend of training that that your team and the GPI Learn Plus team recommends. When it comes to training, um, what what kind of blend have you found to be successful? in getting someone from a non-technical background to being proficient. What's your thought on that? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a longer process, right? So it starts really at day one of introducing them to 
the safety and the compliance aspects of an organization onboarding, right, is is key. Um, and we could talk more about that, but getting them onboarded properly so they have the basic skill sets and tools to understand what they're doing and why they're mm-hmm. doing it is is important. And then next is giving them those general theory, the general theory and knowledge of the areas where in which they're going to work so that they understand what they're looking at. Then you get them out and they need to touch and they need to, again, be mentored a little bit by others in the organization of, hey, here's the protocols, here are the procedures, right? It all has to start to make sense at that point. And then you then you get them to solo, if you will, so that they're able to do that work on their own. Now you start to introduce more advanced skills or, or, or provide them opportunities for advancement in more technical areas, whether that be online uh, training, online theory that we provide at GPI Learn, whether it be classroom uh, instructor-led training, again, that mm-hmm. you know, all of these things GP strategies can provide. Uh, uh, on-site trainers where they have um, equipment that's brought in to help develop skills and and further along that education. Uh, leadership training to to develop that frontline skill set that folks need. You know, it really becomes that longer term package from from day one right on right on through the development and and by engaging them in those things and giving feedback is huge along okay. that. Because that's what keeps them engaged. If you just throw it at them, they're not going to, you know, they're going to do stuff, but then they're going to, at some point, it'll just fizzle out, you know, so. And then what would you say is the the blend of, you know, technical skills versus soft skills in this whole transitional mix? Uh, well, it depends on the, on the. I'll say it depends on the maturity of what the individual is doing, right? So if you start off okay. in, a, in a technical role, you know, they need to have certain skills of, of, of organization and structure and human performance on how to behave and interact, right? Those are, those are skills, those are softer skills, if you will, that they need to understand as, a, as an individual contributor. And then as they maybe advance or develop and advance over time, now they may be in, responsible for, for one or two or a small work group or team of individuals mm-hmm. where now they need to get more, you know, more of a blend, if you will, of the management type or softer skills that they're going to do. So they have an understanding of a technical background. Now you're starting to blend in more of a, of a, you know, of a managerial or, or softer skilled uh, uh, world. And then eventually if they continue to succeed and advance, that then tends to shift. It would be less of the technical and obviously more of the organizational. And, you know, you can get, get into financial and uh, I mean, it can, it can really depend oh, right. on where the individual takes it at that point. Absolutely. The Performance Matters podcast is brought to you by GP Strategies. Together, we can create a world where business excellence makes possibilities achievable. You can subscribe to the show anywhere you get podcasts or listen on our website at gpstrategies.com.